Hi everybody, it's Lauren at Plan Small. I am going to do a tutorial that I have said that I was going to do for a long time, um, and I'm finally getting around to it. The Cocoa Daisy kit next month is Daisy Fields. So in September, it's um, this is the kit. It has in, in it a really lovely purple. It's very light and matches this notebook cover that we got uh, last year in the fall. I think it was the November kit, the Gather kit. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think this is available still, but you know, they come out pretty regularly. This is um, from Lemon Grove. There've been a lot um, of these. And I just prefer to have a ring, or I'm sorry, a ring or disc bound system. I prefer disc bound um, to the Traveler's Notebook setup. So for me, it makes more sense to go ahead and put discs in and then use, um, like punch the Coco Daisy mini inserts. Like I, I divide, I'll, uh, I'll show you that in a different video. I'll divide the mini dory, um, cut it open and then, um, punch it for heavy planner discs and then put it on the discs in the cover that I create from this mini, like mini book cover. So um, I wanted to walk through that process with you today in case there are other people who prefer the disc bound system to the Dory system and would like to see how I set it up. Um, I hope that this is helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know. If there are any of these available in the shop, I'll link them below. But just keep your eye out. Um, there are usually several available throughout the year as notebook covers. Um, which just work really well. So they come usually with this elastic and then there's a pin loop and two pockets, which make them perfect for a little planner setup. Um, you can put your notebook in the back. Um, I don't think this one has one, no. You can put your notebook in the back, store things in the front pocket. It's, it really works out pretty nicely. You have to trim a few things to make it work, um, but I'll go through all of that. All right, well, let's get started. I'm gonna open this one. This one's never been used, but when I got this cover, um, it had been used and folded, and it really hasn't made a difference. So if you've already got one and it fo you folded it and put it used it as a cover, go ahead and cut it and see what happens because I don't think um, it really makes a big difference. You can see where it was folded there, but. I mean, as far as the cover goes, you can't you can't tell from the outside, and it um, hasn't really affected the usefulness of the color cover for me. All right, so for my purposes, I don't use these, um, but you could use it on the outside after you're finished, like this, if you wanted to keep your planner closed so you can keep it and use it like that if you want to um, after you're finished. You could probably even, well, I don't know if this would mess up anything or not, let's see. If you thread it through the discs, oh, I did that backwards, how does it go? Like this, yeah. So if you thread it through, that doesn't good. I don't know how you would do this this way. Oh, it just doesn't pull through. So if you don't mind scratching your discs, you can just use it like this. That way, if you want. So there's a couple of options for this thing. It'll fall out. So I would just go on the outside over here. So what we're going to do is um, to make a cover like this for 
from this one. So this, these were the same size. As you can see, what I have done is I cut around the hole, then I punch, I trim this down. So I cut around the hole, just barely across the width. So just barely outside the width of the um, TN hole. And then I will um, trim down just a little bit uh, so that the holes will not interfere with this pocket. And then punch. Um, I use a crocodile punch from We Are Memory Keepers. Um, and it just allows me to really go through the thick material. I, they have, We Are Memory Keepers has a mushroom hole punch, but the reviews and someone on the Coco Daisy group said that the mushroom hole punch doesn't really allow for thicker materials to um, slide easily. So it's actually um, easier to slide if you use these. I would love to know if somebody uses the mushroom hole punch, whether or not they like it better. Um, I haven't had any issues with the um, round punch coming undone or being loose, uh, so I just go ahead and keep using that one. All right, so what I do, and you could do this with a ruler, but it's just faster <laughs> if you have a cutting board. I use my cutting board to line up right next to so there's the hole. I just want it just, just off of that. So I use the hole in the TN to look for this line, the furthest right line. And then once I had found it, I just passed it, um, barely passed it up. And now I'm going to use the cutting board. I This thing will not cut all the way through the material. So I'm gonna make a couple of passes so that I know where the line is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut with scissors. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so you see I made that cut to the right of that hole and it did not cut all the way through the material, but it did give me a nice straight line that I can follow with my scissors. If you have a guillotine cutter, that may work to cut all the way through this material. I don't know. Um, I don't think I have any process that will work better than this. Okay. So now we have one side of this cut. This line is not very visible when you have it on the discs. So don't beat yourself up if it's not perfect. So that's the back of the planner. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna line up that hole and go just beyond it and cut it off. And if you want, you can take your other piece and just make sure it looks like it lines up with where your cut's gonna be. And that looks like it'll be pretty perfect. You just cut. Oh boy, that may not have been the right. Okay, so I got nervous, but not for a good reason. Those two line up. So you really do want the two sides of the planner to line up, um, more so than to be cutting right on the edge of the hole. So you want the two sides to be the same size, more than you want that line to be. You know what I mean? You don't want them to be different sizes when you finish the planner. Okay, so now we're gonna use our scissors again. So the way that these are stitched, you may have noticed that I'm cutting through stitches. The way that these are stitched, I believe the stitching is glued. I've been using this one for a while and it was even bent before and the stitching has not come undone for this. So I have not had any issue with that. If you have issues, let me know. Um, I'd hate to tell people um, the wrong thing, but if you have a little bit 
of um, loose stitching there, you can use um, uh, fray check. Just put a little bit of fray check on those stitches if you want to make sure that they stay. So if you are um, wanting to complete this, I just usually rub this to get all the, um, there's kind of a filler in there. I just, there's, I just rub it to get the loose pieces off. Um, if you want this to look very professional, you could round this corner or not, and then paint this with leather finishing. I will link a bottle of what I'm talking about below. It's just painted like these. So you could just use a white to paint that line so that it looks nice and finished. Again, it hasn't bothered me at all to have that be unfinished with the rings on the planner. I don't even know, I don't even look at that, you know. When do you sit there and stare at your binding? But if it bugs you, there is a solution. All right. So now we have our two sides. They line up pretty nicely. Hooray. And it's time to look at cutting away the inside pocket and marking for the punch. So I would use a Happy Planner cover as your punch guide. So I have this wrong, wrong cover from Happy Planner. And you want to make sure that you line up. I'm going to draw it on the inside. So this is now garbage. new cover. This is our old cover. I typically will punch all the way through this pocket also. And I do that because I want to know where those holes are. And I don't want to mark it twice. So um, there are a couple of things that we care about. We care about the line of the discs being straight across, so we want them to match up across. And we care about um, the placement so that the discs are appropriately placed so you don't, um, so that you can punch with a happy planner punch. I use five disc places so that um, it's just, that is just the number that works with a happy planner punch or really any of these disc bound punches it's just the number that works and um so this is a daisy dory page that's the number you can punch without hitting any other um lines so this is off center but um okay so we're going to use five we want those five to be centered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you want to not use two of these. All right. You want those five to be as centered as they possibly can be. Um, if you want, well, if you want, you can use this thing because this thing is centered to draw your first line. So you can put that back into your, sorry, I know I told you it was garbage. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, you put that back into your planner. You could even mark these before you cut it off. That might have been smarter. Okay, so now I can take my happy planner and say, okay, if that's the center, then I'm using this wet erase marker 
because I know that it'll come off of this um, faux leather, I will be able to wash it off. Um, Here's the center line, two, three. And we have two more at the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna finish the mushrooms. So you wanna draw the whole mushroom when you're doing these. Okay, so now I kinda know where my stuff is going to be. Now, I don't want to line up to the hole anymore. I want to line up the two sides. I want these two sides to be exactly lined up. So we're going to go again. Line these two up. Draw my lines. And my mushroom tops. I'm drawing over top of that pocket. Okay. So now we've marked where our holes go. don't look. The ones on the right look shorter than the ones on the left. Alright, so let's try again. Make sure. Measure twice, cut once. I'm going to go ahead and do... I think that's because I'm right-handed. Let's turn it over. Okay, so now this should come off of this cover. You can see it's coming off of my fingers. It shouldn't leave a permanent mark on either cover. If you use this type of wet erase marker, you just use water and get it off. Um, so now everything is lined up and we are going to punch our holes. For this, I unlock my punch I have this set so that it doesn't stop me anywhere, but I could set it so that it stops me at the right spot. If I wanted to open the bottom so that you can see, let's see if I can get it all the way set up. Okay, that does not help. So the punch guide will not help you. You have to just let's see if I can get this up so that you can see. You have to just put your Punch centered with the line on the edge of, you see what I'm doing there? I'm going to punch out right along the top of the mushroom and with that line at the bottom centered in the middle of my punch. Punch all the way, I wiggle a little bit just to make sure I've gone. All the way through. So again, I have the bottom of this thing open and I'm looking through the punch hole lining up against lining up against this mushroom cap. I want it to be centered. I want the line to be centered. I'm going to punch right at the edge of that mushroom cap to get that always mark these a little bit and I'll know if we're dry. So I'm going to punch all the way through the pocket. Same process. Line that up so that the so that the mushroom part is at the top of the hole 
and that line is straight down the center of my punch. And this is a little harder because it's going through that pocket material also. All right. Okay, I know this is all over there. Don't worry about it. of the mushroom and with that line straight down the middle okay so there's one finished now we want our back cover done I'm gonna take the top of this mushroom so this is the one that I didn't um, use my right hand to fill the hole in at first, so it's got a taller mushroom, but I still want to be at the very tip of the highest mushroom top. Does that make sense? So this one, you can see the pocket is well out of the way, so you don't have to worry about it. It is worth it to take your time doing this. Okay. So there, now we have all of our little holes done. So now I'm going to go ahead and if you have a really steady hand, you can do this without drawing a line. If you're worried about it, you can draw a line. So um, just at the very edge of your holes, let's see, I gave a little allowance um, here. So you might want to try that also. Just give a little bit of allowance. There's a divot in my cover. Okay. You have a little bit of allowance so that you get clearance. And then um, draw a line. Again, with this, with this wet erase marker. Um, this is what I use. If you have something you know will come off of this easily, um, go for it. Pencil may work lightly. Um, I just prefer the wet erase marker because I know that it's going to come off. All right, so now you cut down this edge and cut. You could leave that pocket if you want to. You could just leave it alone and say, I'm going to allow that pocket to be punched by the holes and I'm not going to worry about it. And that's fine by me. I wanted it to be free of that. So I go ahead and trim. And it leaves this little divot here, but that doesn't bother me. Um, okay, we can't wash it off yet because we need these little lines. So we're going to cut on either side toward the holes. Cut on either side of the line that we made. And this is the part that I have trouble doing really well. If these are too tight on your rings or your discs, you can widen them. But I generally, if I go on either side of the marker, then I don't have that issue. Okay, I'm going to get a wet wipe so that I can get all this stuff off. Okay, so here's another interesting warning about this. It will come off of just about anything, but it stays on my skin. <laughs> All right. 
I mean, I think if I wash my hands, it'll be fine. Okay. Okay, so there's a little ghosting there left. Um, I think it'll buff out as time goes on. If it bothers you, you may want to choose a different marker to work with. So. For all that that was on my hands and on this and everywhere, it cleans off pretty nicely. Okay. Put this on this cover too. I would probably use a cover you don't love just in case, but, or a darker one where it won't show. All right, I'll put a warning in there that says that you need to be careful about this. I have been proven drastically wrong about this marker. All right. Okay. So now this is garbage. Now we can put our, oops, disc in and start filling this up with this month's Dory and other exciting, wonderful things. All right, I hope that that helped. I hope that it um, answered your questions about how to get this done. If you have any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you for putting up with my um, silliness and my mistakes. Um, it was a real pleasure to spend time with you today, and I hope that you'll come back and watch more videos. Thanks, y'all.